All right, this is a 2017 Ford Explorer XLT. And this is actually one of the cars in our family. This is my wife's car. After an extensive search, she decided on this. And I personally have a very love-hate relationship with it. It's a great car and it's filled with frustrations. So today I'm gonna give you a quick tour around the outside. I'm gonna give you a tour of the inside. We're gonna get it out and drive it and I'm gonna kind of break everything down for you and just let you decide. Is it great or is it a has-been? Let's take a look, guys. All right, so anytime I do one of these videos, and when I'm reviewing a car, I ask myself two questions. The first is, would I recommend it to someone else? The second is, would I be proud to have one of these in my driveway? And I'm gonna answer both of those at the end of this video for you. All right, so first off, welcome back to All Cars. I'm John, if you haven't met me before, I appreciate you being here. And uh, I'm really excited to do this one because like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with this vehicle. Uh, the Explorer is one of those cars that, well, if you've ever heard the phrase, never say never, well, the Explorer is one of those things that really brought it home for me. Many years ago, I hated the Explorer. I was a Jeep guy and I swore I would never, ever own an Explorer. And here we are. So, I I have a mixed feelings about this. I, I really like it. It is the most luxurious, the quietest, the most packed with technology vehicle in I, basically any of the cars in our, our family. And it feels really old to me at the same time. Now, I think every generation Explorer is better looking than the previous generations, and this is no exception. I actually think this is a really good looking vehicle. Up here at the front, I like what they did with the grill. When they moved to this platform, it's front uh, wheel drive. It's This one's actually all wheel drive. The way they did the headlights, the way they wrapped everything, they made it look narrower and longer, but still substance. Um, I like that. I really do. I think it's a good looking vehicle. It's got three rows, more than we need. But my wife came from a minivan when she chose this and she didn't want, I wanted her to get a small convertible, but she wanted something with substance and she got this. Now, interestingly, while she loves her vehicle, she will probably move to a minivan next because she when, when you're in a parking space like this and there's a car right here maneuvering around and opening this door, she liked being able to just pop a key and have the door slide open. Now up front, let's continue. I want to talk about the hood a little bit. It's a, it's a composite material. It's plastic or something like that. When you drive, you can actually see it wave and move. Uh, and I don't mean just vibrate. I mean it moves. It's got this sculpting right here. And this one's really nice in the middle, but you can see it actually, if you park on a slope, it actually pond water right there it's a it's a little you know it's not great i guess is what i'm saying also we had to have this repainted for there's something about this style that directs stuff debris from the road right here and it'll chip up the front right here we actually had to have this repainted right after we bought it um walking down the side i really like the the style of the 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 vehicle overall, it's got these plastic pieces right here. So it is a little flat right here with the metal, but it's plastic right there. It gives it a slightly rugged look, but then it's sculpted down the sides. And I really like it. You've got this squared off area right here, kind of what's mimicked up there on the hood. I just think it's a good looking vehicle. Down here, you've got pretty basic looking haunches, but blacked out right here and right here. Ford was a little bit ahead of the curve when it came to blacking things out. You could say they copied it from Land Rover and when they owned Land Rover in their day, but regardless, they were still a little bit ahead of it. And then back here at the back, I mean, it's good looking. A little bit of bright work right here, a little bit of shape right here on the taillights. And it jumped out at me that while the taillights are, they're good looking. I think the side is cool. And I think this back part looks pretty good. 
It's interesting, that is the shape that they're now doing for the headlights on the new Maverick, uh, on the newly introduced um, 2022 Ranger that's coming out, and what is going to be the corporate face of the F-152, those C-shaped, they actually used it here as well. So why don't we take a quick look inside, and uh, I'll tell you what I think in there, and then we'll start getting into some things I don't like. All right, now one cool thing about this is being an XLT, this thing's loaded with technology. Now it has, where is it? It's got one of these, it's a key, it's remote transmitting thing, so it has a push button start, you know, all that fancy stuff, but it's got the press it two times to start it, press it two times to open the back. But it also, we accidentally found out, let's see if it does it, There we go. You can actually stick your foot under it. It's actually easier just to press the button, but hey, you know what? It's got good space back here. It's got a third row. It's got space underneath here. We put in a WeatherTech liner, and then you can see we've got some, you know, like Christmas presents. Hope that wasn't breakable back here. Both the rear seats fold down. It's a great space back here, and we love this liner. I'm gonna go uh, do a whole a whole piece on WeatherTech one day. Uh, you know, it's got a little cubby back here just for sticking random stuff. It's got a power point over here with a small light. And then it's got some molded in places for stuff to sit and uh, drink holders up there for the third row. Uh, the back seat's really pretty nice overall. You've got a molded in little cup holder right here. You know, a little bit, this is soft padding right here. This is, it's harder, but it's still a little soft padding right here. So it's pretty nice. It's not filled with this hard plastic down here. This seat is where I would sit. Granted, there's stuff on the floor right here, but look at the leg room, almost a fist worth right there. There's a grab handle. If there's a complaint, it's that this and this area right here get in your way just a little bit when you're getting in and out. There's enough space, three across. Uh, if you could sit somebody back here that wouldn't complain too much. There is no real armrest here, but you do get some climate control. And is that, uh, yep, that is a power point back here too. Couple of map pockets, vents up in the ceiling. You know, it's, it's a pretty nice place. It's not a minivan. It doesn't have DVD and everything else, but I believe that was all available at the time. All right, so up front, it's more of the same soft padded material here, hard down below, a little soft up here, but they start adding this, this bright work right here, and it's got this cool texture to it as well. And I love how the, the door wraps into the dash so aggressively right here. It's got a few foibles and we'll go over some of that when i change the camera position to inside but generally it's really attractive and very similar to the review i did of my accord where you've got you know a tan down below dark up top a little bit of bright work it gives it a lighter and airier feeling a little bit soft here this gets a little bit of a texture over on the other side it's just, it's just a nice place to spend time while never quite, never quite reaching luxury. And I guess that's the big frustration I have with this vehicle. The chassis is not terribly old, but it's derived from an older chassis. Uh, the, this chassis, if I remember correctly, was the D4, which was derived from the D3, which was the Ford Taurus, and an, uh, before that, the Ford 500. So it's a front-wheel drive, unibody-type chassis so it's one of the big problems with this is while it's loaded with tech it's very good at what it does it just feels like an older platform to me where things are just slightly out of place and that's where these frustrations that i've been talking about start to really come up so let me let me take you inside and i'll show you what i'm talking about all right, so we're inside now, and again, forgive some of the mess here, right? But what I love about this vehicle is, is it's so easy to live with. So, you know, let's press that to get started. It has automatic headlights over here. Standard Ford 
steering wheel, complete with one of the most important frustrations to me, and a pretty good dash. I, I really like it. Um, you know, on the right side, slightly configurable. I tend to leave it on navigation. Left side, same way. Fuel economy, if you can't see that, we're doing 22.6, and a lot of that was um, interstate driving. We were on a long trip, so that was about, uh, oh, three and a half hours of driving on the interstate before I did some mixed driving. Um, you know, on the left, Ford loves to put their up-downs for the door locks up here. I hate that. Power windows, power mirrors, you know, that button opens up the rear hatch. Just so much tech in here, and Ford's really, really good infotainment system. A little bit of storage right here. An actual gear shift, they switch to the knob after this. Two cup holders. The four-wheel drive system, different settings, and then kind of a mess. But a big area here, nice soft touch here, leather. You know, the seats are heated. The steering wheel is heated. Air conditioning is automatic. It's just a super nice place to spend time. And it connects with sync or excuse me, with Apple CarPlay. I don't know about it. So, sorry, it actually switched to my phone and then cut off uh, the video when it started playing a podcast. So anyway, it connects via Apple um, CarPlay. I don't know if it does Android Auto because we don't have one, but you do get a place to sit. Climate, that's where you turn on the heated steering wheel, but down here is where you can turn on the heated seats or not. It's that kind of split that starts my conversations about how this car feels. This is great. You know, the phone, the navigation, using Apple to um, do my navigation for long trips, the fact that it's got dual zone climate controls, all fantastic. But then there's little things that start to add up. Now, my wife told me this weekend her biggest complaint is the lack of storage. And for a, as big a vehicle as this is, and again, somebody who came from a minivan, well, you get that little pocket, right? It's big enough for a can and a small water bottle. Then you get these, big enough for like a can or a small water bottle. This, big whoop. And that's it. That's all you get in here. So there's a severe lack of shor shortage of storage when you're coming from something like, there you go, a, a minivan. The other thing is, is that to me, this feels not unfinished. It's hard for me to describe. Like it's just an old platform and they had to throw things together. Like right here, when this is in gear, oh, and I'll go ahead and say it does have a backup camera, which is really handy. We don't have the uh, cruise control assist and all that other stuff. But the mirrors do have a little red light that'll show up to show you if there's somebody in the other lane or not. This will show up when you're backing into a spot if you get too close or if somebody's crossing in front of you or when you're backing up like out of your driveway, it'll boop, 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 boop at you. It's really annoying, but it's super, super valuable. It does have a backup camera, which is just horrible quality. Okay, my 2014 Honda is better than that. But let me put it in gear and show you. Right here, when I'm driving, I set my hand right here. But look at this. Let me put it out of gear first. This is not rounded. It's chromed, it's nice, but it's got this sharp edge right here. And it's that level of detail that drives me up the wall in this car. It's a nice, it's leather wrapped, but then it gives you a hard edge right there on your palm. Another one is this, okay? You've got your phone controls over here, but the volume control for the, the stereo is here. It's on the right. 
But if I'm driving with my left hand like this, my right hand resting right there, I want the volume controls over here. So it's, it's a Ford thing, but it drives me up the wall. The other one is, I'm gonna to try to get this, is a, it's an ergonomic thing. Hopefully you can see this. If I'm sitting here relaxed and I just drop my hand, okay? My hand is resting at the back windows, not the front. So I have to actually move my hand forward to get to the front windows. This is just a basic ergonomic thing. They also made this hollow, right? Stick your hand through it. I like it to have a little base in there. So if I want to put my wallet in there or another pair of keys for a long trip, I want them to sit here, not fall through. And then the simple fact that I rest my hand here, I can't, I'm not doing it. And then this is actually a twist. I, it just really bad and slightly out of date ergonomics to me. The other thing I'm going to say is the seat looks a little small. Like, look at this. Here's the edge of the seat. Here's my fist. I can pass it. There's so much room. Why did they make the seat so tiny? It feels for all the world like you sit on a stool, a very comfortable, plush, leather heated stool. And I don't understand why. And the final thing I'll say about it is it's got a foot parking brake, which normally comes off pretty quick, but a lot of times when you press it, of course it didn't do it that time, you press it and it just doesn't do anything. All right, so after all that, why don't we get this thing on the road and I'll tell you what I think about it. Safety first. All right, so the misses keep coming, honestly, while you drive this thing. Uh, this is the 3.5 liter. It's not the twin turbocharged engine. I didn't show you a picture of it. Maybe I'll open the hood and show you that too. But it's super powerful. It's smooth. And I really like it. I'm a big fan of this engine, except for that interior water pump issue. Um, we still decided to do it. And I don't want this to be a negative review. This is a wonderful car. Maybe. It, I don't know if it's right for you is, is the question. So it's a powerful, smooth engine. I really like it. Um, I, I think it's, I just, I love it. I think it's a wonderful engine. It runs through this transmission that's pretty darn good. Most of the time you never think about it. At low speeds, uh, it will tend to bump into a gear pretty abruptly. Um, and sometimes it'll bump up into a gear, but when we've taken trips to the mountains, I think it does a marvelous job of detecting the grade you're at, picking a gear and trying to hold um, the speed. It does a great job at it. And overall, this is a great, uh, there's a pilot in front of me as a matter of fact. Um, this is a great vehicle for trips. In spite of the fact that the seat is small and the thigh support is, is short, this is a great car, but it continues this weird mix of feelings in me. It rides smoothly, but tends to crash over bumps a little bit. The dashboard's huge, but again, you have no real storage. The seats are comfortable. It, it's mostly pretty quiet, actually, but you get this weird, uh, sometimes a little too much road noise, a little too much wind noise coming through as well. You know, what I like to say is, is that I would not buy this car for me because, well, it's my wife's car. And the thing is, I enjoy, enjoy driving it. I don't want to drive something this big every single day. Uh, I don't want to navigate it around through the streets or through parking lots, but I actually really enjoy this car most of the time. It's these little things that I'm telling you about that build up to a vehicle that honestly just feels old in a lot of ways. The engine doesn't feel old. The transmission doesn't feel old. The technology does not feel old. It's marvelous. But the little things like dropping my hand here and not touching the windows, I have to move them around. The, 
everything seems to be just a little far away. These little things, it feels like a platform that has been updated and updated and updated and is fresh, is competitive, but all the mounting points are off just a little bit, if you know what I mean. I really like the vehicle. I like its comfort. comfort. I love its technology. And I have to say that when we were looking to replace my wife's minivan and we got this, um, we started with the Hondas and the Toyotas. Um, we drove a couple of different pilots and we didn't like them. And it wasn't a styling thing. It was a substance issue. They, they rode a little loose in the rear. They felt minivanish, but not in a bad way. I'm not trying to slander them. I'm not one of those saying, oh, the pilot's just a minivan. I'm not. It just, it lacked a substance. The same thing, the Toyota was was not. It, it felt like the Highlander. It felt substantial, but it was so cheap inside. It And it really took, I, I don't know what's happening here at this light. Um, there was, uh, the, the interiors, the seat materials and things like that, it looked cheap. Um, and in fact, in, in spite of, uh, the reputation they have, we walked in, we looked at one and basically my wife was like, no, I was, she wouldn't drive it. She wouldn't have a Highlander because it looked so cheap inside. Any other strengths went away. So all the research we did through the Traverse and the GMC version and, um, you know, even the Volkswagens, we settled on this. Uh, we trust Fords. We consider ourselves kind of a Ford family. We test drove it. It feels substantial. It feels powerful. It's got the tech and the price was right. And it's been a wonderful, lovely car. It's had a few different, uh, yes, we've, we've been part of the recall bug. Um, there's been a few different recalls on this. We just had one replaced um, last week, I think it was, uh, the uh, roof rails, or maybe it was the week before. The, the roof rails, uh, there's some piece that could come loose and fly off. Anyway, they had the parts, they went ahead and fixed that. Uh, um, there's a couple of others that really don't apply to us because we live down south and they're more for winter areas where there's corrosion that's set in. Um, so. Other than that, it's been a fantastic car. It's been flawless. We've had it for probably about three years now, something like that. And it's been absolutely fantastic. And it's perfectly quiet right now. On the interstate, it actually drives more like an old, large, you know, traditional American sedan. It rides with a heft to it. And I really like that. This is the long distance cruiser in our fleet because, not because of the gas mileage, but because it just rides with, with some substance and some security. Uh, it, it's, it's been a great car for us, but is it right for you? Well, that's the question we're gonna answer here in just a minute. The other thing I'll say about it is that the steering is um, interesting mix. This is electronic steering. Um, it does have a good heft to it, but it doesn't necessarily have any feeling <laughs> to it. I have no real sense what the front wheels are doing other than there's just a general vibration through the steering wheel, but it's not bad. It's not noticeable unless you're really kind of thinking about it. It's just got a good heft. So you, you feel like you're actually doing something with it. All right. So we're back here at, well, video location one. And I'm going to say that there's a couple of things I didn't cover. There's a lot of things I didn't cover about this vehicle. Uh, it's got the Ford numbers right here, so you can leave your key locked inside. I like this car. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. I don't know that it's perfect. You know, I'm not sure that you might be happier with a Toyota. You might be happier with the Pilot or the Nissan Pathfinder. It's not a luxury car, even though the Aviator is based on it, but it's super packed with technology. It rides good, it's quiet, it's just a little unrefined, honestly. And I kind of like that. It's got a little bit of an attitude. And I've got to say that most everything I've mentioned, 
I think would fade away if I drove it every single day. But comparing this with other cars, other vehicles, I jump in, I highlight these little things that drive me up the wall. So let's go back to the two questions I ask whenever I review a vehicle. Number one, would I recommend this to other people? And the answer is absolutely. Absolutely I would. I think it's reliable. I think it's comfortable. I think it's just a great vehicle overall. If you're looking for a three-row sport utility, I think this is an awesome, awesome choice, especially because we're talking about used cars. Now, you, I would recommend drive the Pilot, drive the Pathfinder, drive the Highlander, right? Drive the, the Volkswagens, you know. But I think this is a combination of technology and price and performance that's a little hard to beat. But I gotta say, I don't think that Ford really sweated some of the details in this. So the second thing would be, would I be proud to call this mine? Would I be proud to own this and have it in my driveway to arrive somewhere with it? And I've got a mixed answer for you on that. Number one, the answer is obviously yes, because we have it in our driveway, right? But the other half of that is, I wouldn't buy this vehicle. I'm not in the market for a three-row sport utility. I'd drive a two-row before I did. I'd get something like the Edge or the Murano before I drove this. I think a minivan serves people better than this vehicle. So no, I wouldn't buy this car. I love it. We take it everywhere. It's in my driveway. And I recommend it to you to go check it out. But no, I wouldn't buy this for myself. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know below. Otherwise, please, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any uh, great ideas, let me know. Love to think about them. Thanks, guys.